cool. We have Leo Dess. This is awesome because he slid into LinkedIn DMs. We're both really big on LinkedIn. And I'm actually really excited because he is he's in the access control industry. He's a consultant, does a lot of cool stuff. And we've been chatting for a little bit uh, over the past couple of weeks, getting to know each other. He's in the Slack workspace and low voltage nation. So, hey, Lee, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate you coming on, man. No, not a problem at all. I really appreciate the opportunity to do so. So thank you. Yeah. Hey, just so let's jump right into it and give me a history of how you got started in the industry and what you're doing now. Yeah, no problem. So cut my teeth at Lutron Electronics from the lighting control side and then bounced around from there, actually started my own integration company in the DC area with my wife called Energy Light Control. We had this big vision that we were going to get into like solar and wind and uh, lighting controls and all sorts of stuff. So we did that for a couple of years, uh, uh, sold that business and then went to work at Brevo, who's a cloud-based access control provider, then Unikey, uh, who does uh, some embedded stuff on Shark Tank, all this really cool stuff that that company did. And then left there, went to a Legion, big lock company, then on my own. So bounced around a bit, sort of been on this, uh, you know, in and out from the security access control space, found my love there, if you would, and I've uh, been spending my time doing that. That's awesome. So uh, why... Why did you reach out to me? Like how, you said you were kind of like stalking me on LinkedIn or what? Uh, why LVN? Yeah, no problem. So I would say at first what caught my attention is somebody who produces content themselves, just watching what you did and how you've done it. Super unique, uh, catchy, and also though it drove value. So uh, the other part is you can really tell you got a passion for this. So I, that that attracted, if you would, to the content. Uh, it's funny. I, it's, I feel the same way. There's a there's a mayor of some or city council of some small town in in, in Canada where he dances like in like it's just super rich content that is just different. So saw that. Then when I dug into it, I saw what you're doing, and what I appreciated about it was is you're creating a community. And you're doing it super positive uh, and in really a different way than a lot of other people have been doing. And I just think if you're looking at what the future looks like, it looks like what you're doing. And I wanted to be part of it. So regardless of how we are going to do it, I just wanted to be part of it somehow. Although I think there's a lot of ways we can do a lot of good stuff. And, but that, that's what brought me to Low Voltage Nation. Yeah. And I think you mentioned the road show. Uh, that's going to be exciting. I don't know if you're going to get your Airstream or not, but I definitely want to <laughs> get my... Uh, my LV and tour van. And then we're going to, we're going to hit up some meetups and some, some conferences. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I can promise you I'll, I'll, I'll be there in something, but I'll definitely be at a handful of them. Yeah. So we got a lot of overlapping interests. We got, you know, I'm really big in low voltage, obviously, but also the access control industry. Uh, and it's just really cool that you bring, you know, all your experience. Cause I, I've heard a lot about you just kind of when you reached out the first time, I talked to somebody, I talked to John Laurie. He's like, oh yeah, he's like, he's, he's the guy, he knows everybody. And uh, so I'm really excited to get you uh, in the community and, and, and I really am excited to work with you. So uh, talk to me about um, the accelerated changes uh, you had mentioned in the industry. Like that's a big challenge. Like what's going on like in the last like year? I know 2020 has been kind of crazy, but what have you seen? Yeah, especially specifically in the, the access control security space, you know, it's, there were trends happening anyways, like mobile, uh, cloud-based tools, things like that. And I, I would say there was like a pressure cooker of the old versus the new happening at the time. And inevitably some of the new was gonna take over, but then when COVID happened, it sort of accelerated some of that stuff. And what's nice about it though, is, is that it sort of forced the value conversation that you know, people, you go to a trade show and it's like cloud, cloud, mobile, mobile everywhere. And right. you not really talk about what that means and what it does. It's just an architectural type of conversation of how systems are set up. But now this is totally forced the value creation story, which I think if you trickle down on that, what gets me excited and kind of what helps with like the stuff that we work on is it's like the appreciation for content marketing in a lot of ways. Uh, I think the end user is now a stakeholder that a lot of the manufacturers and people in our industry, you know, the the integrators totally are there with the end user. They're there with them all the time, but there's like 17 parts removed from the manufacturers. And now because of mobile and these technologies that are being introduced and this need to shift how things are working, there's just a, another level of uh, engagement that we haven't seen. And that that's exciting to me because there's a perfect excuse now to do things a little bit different than was done before. And maybe in some cases a lot different. 
and change is fun. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. So you've worked for some of these companies like Brevo, Legion. Um, what companies are exciting you right now? I don't know if you can even talk about that, but like, do you have any ones that you're kind of eyeballing that are really yeah. keeping up with the pace of the market and the changes? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brevo is one of them. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you mentioned them. I mean, they, that's a company that's been around for a while since I think 1991 in the cloud-based access control space. And now's their moment really. So I've been mm. pretty impressed with uh, even their shift that they've done to more of a data visualization, uh, IT type product than uh, historically. So that, that's that been exciting. Um, been excited about a company called NextKey. If you take a look at what they're doing, that might be actually a good product for a lot of people you listen to. It's mm. They make a wireless latch and uh, a wireless, um, uh, it's like cylinder, uh, for the small business, uh, really nice slick interface in and out. Uh, pretty cool. The visitor management space gets me excited cause it's really the front end rich interface for the, the world, if you would, that where historically it's been about readers, uh, and, and really locks it, not a lot of u- user experience around that, but now these visitor management systems do, and people like traction guest envoy, uh, you got proxy click who's on location. Those are some examples of companies that are doing some really, really cool stuff that in my opinion are the front end of access control now and, and are going to really change the way that we interface with products. So that, that's an example. I mean, there, there's, you got some, actually, I would even say like Linnell and the old school side, mm-hmm. they, they've got, uh, I'm, I'm impressed with the way that they're doing this healthy building side. So that's an example of shifting sort of the message to meet the, meet the market. I like that, um, which is not always that easy for older companies. And, and you got a long list of, of people that are that are doing stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. To kind of break it down in, into two categories, or there's probably three or four categories. But if you were to look at small to medium sized businesses, uh, as opposed to like bigger industrial or enterprise, wh- what do you see is really keeping up in the small to medium sized business? Because that's kind of where we are at the sweet spot uh, with yeah. LVN. A lot of our our people. Um, what do you see with uh, with SMB spaces? Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, and it's actually one of the shifts that I think has come out of with COVID. So if you think about it, the access control security market's really been focused on the high security. It's like that 10% airports. And most mm-hmm. of the systems are brought down to the marketplace. And you get this, you know, a tanker brought into a small business. And I, I don't <laughs> right. think that a lot of those products were made for that marketplace, but right. you don't really and then your gap between that and then it's sort of like an an electrified lock uh at best on the let's call it the smaller end coming up and then you got a bit of consumerization happening so it's actually really uh, a lot of attention being brought to that small to medium-sized business and i actually believe you're going to start to see for a number of reasons number one the investment in the infrastructure side so Um, you're not taking these big client server systems into that. The cloud, I think, is only going to help on that area. And then you do have the consumerization side of, you know, everyone from like alarm.com to Mm -hmm. companies you may or may not even know of, uh, like uh, there's a a long list of them that come from the the bottom up, if you would, from the consumer side that is going to be bringing solutions to that small to medium sized business who frankly our industry hasn't done a really good job of. The other part is our industry has been historically predominantly focused on new construction. And I do believe in the small to medium sized business, it needs to have more of a retro feel because of the mm-hmm. sensitivity to cost uh, when it comes to, like, if you're gonna go into a, on a local bakery and charge four to five grand in just materials and, and parts to, to change out a door so they can open it up with their phone, they're gonna look at you like you're nuts. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, pressures are being put onto that, that I, that's why I think the access control security market is massively bigger. And once it capitalizes on that medium sized business and, and frankly, mm-hmm. back to one of your original questions too, around like why I was interested in you is that I really think the systems integrator definition of who impacts our industry is changing and the low voltage side is ripe for it. And yes. I, I, that's why I think you put all that together chaos and good but good chaos good chaos yeah lots of growth if you look at you know new york city is always growing it seems like but also in my city in nashville uh, we're we're erecting all these buildings and, and every single one of these buildings needs some sort of low voltage infrastructure obviously and then they want the access control stuff um another interesting topic is kind of with covid and the work from home movement uh, like are these offices going to be uh 
filled up and like what are we going to do on like the residential side and then the office yeah. building side it's it's kind of weird right now it is i mean i love we always want to have the binary conversations right is it dead or alive <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you know so this idea i i think it's again it's going to reimagine the way that workspaces happen i mean i i've been working for my house for a while i i'm i'm dying to get into an office and yeah. like i'm not even an animal of one so i can imagine if you're an animal of one you, you really want to go back there but yeah I, you know i i just i think it's a reimagination of it i think multifamily space is going to be really cool that you have again i think the opportunity to provide like think about people like ourselves that do this if you want like a quiet space and you got four roommates, it's like going to be really hard to do that. So creating spaces that people can do it. I think about where I live right now. And if I want to go downtown to an office, I, I passed like probably a couple thousand places that if I knew and had access to be able to do on demand, uh, you know, space, if I could get in there, I probably would use it. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a whole, I think it, it's just a different ballgame, which again, we can look at it two ways. It, it's scary. I agree. And, and it sucks in a lot of ways. <laughs> right. But I also think, and maybe I'm an optimistic person when it comes to this, but I think there's more opportunity than, I, I, I joke yeah. that it's a little bit like moat, like molting, right? Like we're, we're getting rid of some of the bad and bringing in some more of the good and making room for it. So that's how I view it. Yeah, I like it. That's good. Let's uh, let's take a kind of a step back. I want to hear a little bit more about you know stuff that you've done uh, in the field, but I want to hear a funny story real quick. I want to hear the one about the cold flooded house. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's like it'd be funny because a lot of the people that that listen to your stuff are probably like, yeah, that's what this is. But I guess the the funny part is you know I so opened that business. I thought it'd be great. I'd be you know designing systems and selling <laughs> them to like you know it'd be awesome and. I'm going to be doing a bunch of audio video equipment. Then I find myself, you know, sitting in a basement of a house in the dead winter in DC, which it's cold here and it rained or whatever. It's, I got ankle deep water. I got like, like just draining out of my face. Yes. <laughs> drill over my head going through pulling water. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing? So that was like, it, it's funny, but true and like you know all like i guarantee you people are like yeah dumbass that's how it works but it's a day it's a day in a life baby that's all yeah, but I, I didn't know <laughs> and it opened my eyes because you know up into that point it's funny when you're in the manufacturing side you go into all of these business owners and you tell them what they should do with their business but like you've never turned a screwdriver before so you right. really don't know and you're like you know i can understand now a lot more about how these businesses work when I'm standing there and I'm literally thinking I might die if somebody knocks over. Cause of course there's heaters and you know, we got electrical, it was a complete disaster. Oh yeah. Um, Safety first. <laughs> yeah, all right. I think the say that yes, but I, the, on that job, it was sort of like get the homeowner in first because Christmas was around the corner. Right. Um, and then we'll do safety. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's my, I mean, I, I look back at that as, part funny at least for me thinking like that I, I was doing that but then also reality of like this is how it really gets done exactly yeah but safety first a lot safety of people first. joke about osha and they get on the ladder and they're standing on the top and they're it's being held up by like you know some zip ties or something safety first always yes, you don't want to get I hurt agree. I was, i'm not saying don't 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 follow my lead on that please yeah right that's so funny uh, cool yeah so um your career, uh, you mentioned your father, he was, uh, he's been your cheerleader mentor. Talk to me about, you know, what, what, what role he played in your life and kind of how you got to where you are. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, of course he's, he's, uh, for me, at least he's always been there, but I would say I never really understood it and, and sort of the, the support that he's giving and that, that ability. And I, I, I would say I was an arrogant kid growing up in that case where it was sort of like, when I went to Lutron, he worked there. And I remember I didn't want to go to Lutron because I wanted to go blaze my own trail, which I know was like something really not nice to say to him when, when we had that conversation. I look back and I've, I've since then we've had that conversation. We're cool, but and I'm a lot, lot more wiser now. But like from that point forward, the support and opportunity that it's given me to, like, that, you know, it's like almost like I've been like a safety net that if I failed, it, I was, I was, someone was going to be there to sort of catch mm -hmm. me and prop me back up in that end. And I, I don't know if I appreciated that uh, as much as I do now thinking about a lot of stuff that I'm doing and that 
sort of privilege, if you would, to be in that position. And, and, and now I, you know, I'm cognizant of it and aware of it and, and frankly trying to pay it forward with other people. But that's been the biggest, I mean, he's a hustler from, from day one where he, you know, he's, it's always been a case of him getting out and proving that he can go do it. And, and, you know, that when, when in doubt, go sell something is like, it's been always his thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and he has, and he's proven it and he was successful. And, I, and I'm appreciative of all of that he's done there, but that's, you know, that that's been the biggest, there's been a lot of people along the way, but that he stood out the most. Yeah. yeah. So you, you've been in DC for a few decades, right? <laughs> uh, we're going on two, but yeah, about 18, 19 years now. Uh, yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Where, the, where, where'd you grow up? Born in Cleveland, moved down to Miami. That's why I find this whole move to Miami thing that's going on right now. People talking about kind of funny, but uh, Miami, then lived in Portland, Oregon a little bit, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I graduated. Yeah. So we moved around a lot growing up. Oh, um, so you were born, then, born in here, Cleveland. That's awesome. Yeah. Cleveland. I know. I, I'm a, it's, it's a fun, that's a, that's a, a cool place to be from. Uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily get always that, the love that it needs, but, the history there is pretty rich um it's, yeah. yeah it's uh, I, I lived in northeast ohio for a little bit so uh, cleveland kind of saved my life because i lived in akron but i would drive i would ride my bike every weekend on the towpath to cleveland yeah. for like yeah. for, for meditation and like therapy <laughs> when were you in akron i was in akron i i moved to nashville eight years ago from akron so i was in oh, wow. northeast, so, i was in northeast ohio for about five years ivan's deli Ivan's Deli? I don't know. Is that an Akron? Right? I don't know if yeah, I remember that. Near, near the near the Holiday Inn that's there, near the mall. That was my, that downtown, was my uncle. Downtown, right? That's my uncle. So, yeah, he was a Really? Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. That's funny. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so, all right. So, you said that you cut pizza with your dykes? Is that what, is that what you told me? What? Yeah. That was, that was me. You, you asked, what's my tool? And yeah, well, dike. it's your iPhone. You said your iPhone, yeah, and then you I, said you cut pizza with your dykes. Like, how does that well, even I'm work? Saying, like, if it's a tool tool. This is my productivity tool, like the other one. But this is like the <laughs> the technology tool I have with me everywhere. Yeah. But then when it comes to the tool tool, it's funny. Like, whenever there's a project, it's like, all right, I'm going to go get my dykes and do it. Because it's like, I don't know if I need anything else. And I joke <laughs> that if I need to even cut pizza, I'll, I'll use that thing. Ah, it, I got you. It seems to take care of everything that I, I need. It doesn't matter. Like, I, I that thing's a magic. And it's it's been through hell and back. Yeah. But that they, they work great. Yeah, you can, like, you can you can hammer in nails with dykes. Yeah, you can do all sorts of things with dykes. You can grab electrical wire with them. And it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, you can do yeah. anything with those things. And they last. And, I mean, they you can forget them outside for, like, three months, bring them back in, and they work fine. What what pair? Do you have the Klein Tools ones? Is that what you said? Yeah, Klein Tool ones, yep. Yeah. yeah. I that, love Klein so, Tools. An old, old journeyman once get, showed them to me as a – because when you when you got to twist a whole bunch of electrical wires together, get dimmers together, and get that neutral wire together, that that's that, that I couldn't figure out a better way to do it. And he showed me that trick, and from that day on, I was sold with him. That's awesome. Yeah, Klein hey. Tools, they're uh, they're an LVN Gold vendor. We're uh, we partnered up with them, so that's pretty uh, that's pretty big, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> My there you go. That's yeah. a, that's one of those that comes through, and you're like, yeah, I'm onto something here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Validation right there. For sure. Nice. It's good to have. Yeah. Hey, tell me, tell me about um, your field notes. I was so surprised that you like held those up because we, I got the three pack as well. <laughs> and then, what do you, what are you gonna, what are you taking out of the house when it's on fire? It's yeah, the field. My, my field notes. Right. Like, literally, the house on fire. I'm running up out of here and I'm grabbing this and taking it with me for whatever reason. Like these things have been with me for a while and I keep, I'm like addicted to them. My wife, the other day, I got a whole new pack because they came out with their cities. And so I got oh, Oregon's cool. DC ones. I got that's Maryland. Right. My wife's from Oregon. That's why. And I got you. Um, the look and the feel, they just, they're, they're so interesting too. I think the other part of it is it goes back again to the marketing content marketing side. If you look at their, they make notebooks, literally. They cut paper and staple it together and ship it to people. Let's let's be real, right? Yeah. And but the stories behind what they do, it just it's super interesting. And I, I I find myself reading their blog and you know, like you ever if you ever want to know stats, like let's just say you're stuck, you're like, hey, tell me about Oregon. I'm like, I got you. No problem. Let me get my field notes and I can tell you that, you know, uh it's got a population of three million. 
They see you didn't know that, did you? I do. I do now. That's that's <laughs> awesome, though. Go. It's storytelling, and like you said, it's content marketing. People like that emotion. It does. It's even got a ruler. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Then, like you said, like the local aspect of it is like, oh, my wife there is from is. Oregon. Let's buy one of these. Right. And it's, it's just interesting. I mean, and, and and it's practical. I use it. So I'm a <laughs> note taker. I like to to do my to do list. I've tried every productivity to do list tool that you can download as an app and none of them work for me i know like ever I, evernote did you ever use yeah. evernote <laughs> i did back and I, I i liked it when it first came out but i mean it i've never seen a product never evolve more than that product has from the day it went yeah and it needs an evolution and it just doesn't yeah I, I started using google keep i just kind of yeah. that, that's kind of my note taking tool i don't know there's so many productivity tools and then you just end up getting bogged down you're just like whatever pen and paper that's why pen field note done yeah. yeah and this is small too you put it in back pocket i take it when we were allowed to go outside the house and you know you, something comes up i just write it down done yeah, yeah. so what um what are we going to do next what do you think um what what's a good next step for us I know we're going to get on the road at some point. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, what, what I mean, for me, I think it's creation of some more content that is valuable to your network. Like there's a lot of content because that's the other part now, right? Like everybody's here learning content this way, but how do you separate it so that it adds actual value? And, and I think that's the part, interesting value add content that that could not that could be used by everybody throughout the uh the company and that that that's that's what i'd like to get into and really start to put that together because you know we got a list of you know hundreds of things that we could be doing um yes. and uh I, I i really would like to do the ones that matter so yeah that, that's i'd like to produce some more good good content yeah and then what can people reach out to you for i know that you know you're a consultant you want to be a resource in the community what, what are some good topics or if somebody has a question what could what could you answer for them yeah so our business has three legs of the stool we've got the consulting side strategy side mainly with manufacturers on that end um then there's a content creation side on that you can go to the inside uh, dot online. We've got inside access control, inside visitor management, inside multifamily access control. So we're we're creating a bunch of resources you can go to around specific verticals um, that we have, and, and whether that's blog material or videos. We've done I don't know probably close to 110 uh, interviews, and then we've got mm. 12 podcasts and video casts that we produce for other people in the security industry that talking about cybersecurity all the way down to uh, the international market. So ton of content on that end to go after anything really in the security industry um, that, that you have. I've got people that reach out saying, hey, you know, I, I, I don't know who to go to for, I don't know, intercom systems, whatever it might be. We, we can help make some connections on that end. Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking to go after the small to medium sized business of access control and who's good for today. That's the, the third part of our stool is the data. We, we do an analyst report around, we did 40 access control companies based off of criteria that we produced and scored them off of 70 points of quantitative and qualitative. And it's a report that, that shows that, hey, this company's good for you, not only today, but tomorrow or good for you only tomorrow, but maybe not today, like that type of stuff. We, we're gonna continue to create that type of content for the industry so that People can make good partnering and buying decisions uh, based off of things other than, hey, this has got a blue blinky light and it's blinkier than the other people's. And, it, you know, the, the panel opens like this versus like this. Um, we we kind of want to dive into the business side because I so if we, I'll go on a little tangent here for a second. Pardon Do me. It. But it, I, I think what is one of the things that's changing with with integrators are. In, in manufacturers, this partnership relationship, there's a lot more that manufacturers can bring you than they currently do now. And I really think a deep, deep partnership with a lot of them, and you're showing that with what you're doing. There's a lot of other resources other than the products. And yeah, you've seen it with some, but going beyond, you know, shirts and the golf tournaments and the rest of the stuff too. They, I think there was a realization that the, you know, when, when the integration community became essential, and that was the term that was used coming out of COVID. Like 
I would get shirts printed that said essential. So every time a manufacturer came in, it was reminded to them that they, I'm the people with the feet on the street moving product into the marketplace for you. And, and we need to have a closer relationship than, than you believing I'm the impediment to, to your business growth. Like that has to shift. And, and, and I think that's an opportunity. So I really would like to figure out how to streamline that to the low voltage nation from a security standpoint. I think we can do it. Yeah, totally agree. That's awesome. So we have yeah. the Atlanta meetup coming up. I don't know when <laughs> it was uh, supposed to be in March. Uh, 2020 didn't happen. Uh, yeah. And Brevo was actually, uh, Brevo sent some equipment out to us. So that was going to be pretty cool. We were going to connect our, we built a 14U rack at the first meetup in Nashville. And then we're we're going to start connecting the devices, the endpoint devices, like the cameras, the access control, uh, the, the network, the computers, the phones, like all that stuff. So the Atlanta meetup was geared towards uh, Brevo, and then I think we had Alarm, yeah, Alarm.com and Altronics and Life Safety Power. So yeah. they were going to kind of sponsor it and give some equipment. But it would be really cool to get you out to Atlanta if you're willing to travel to Atlanta. Um, I'll be there. I mean, that's a straight shot down 95 from here. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's going to be good. So you'll, you'll know when that's going to happen, uh, but I don't know when. Maybe March yeah. 2021. Well, Who I'll knows? Be... Probably not, though. <laughs> I'm dying to get out of the house. I'm me too, man. <laughs> I'm, freaking, <laughs> I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Yeah, you can tell me wherever. I'd be like, sure, I'm down. Whatever you need. We can meet up in Akron. Yeah, I, yeah. I've actually got a lot. I mean, obviously, I have connections in Akron and Cleveland, but there's some really cool stuff we're doing up there in Cleveland. There's going to be a meet up there. So Sweet. that's another option. I'd love to. There's a great yeah. little player. Cookies and Lenny's. I can tell I eat my way through wherever I go, but yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so LinkedIn is a good place to find you. You're super active on there. Um, just look up Leo Des. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. what was the website? What's the website name? Uh, if you go to the inside dot online the or inside access control dot com. The inside dot I'm just writing this down. Yeah. So I don't forget. Online. Cool. It's a good place to find you as well. So yeah. is there anything else you wanted to talk about or promote or say before we get off? I mean, the other thing is from a promotion standpoint, I guess we just wrote a book. We, me, mm. uh, called the six phase changes, uh, impacting access control. Uh, mm. shape, I'm sorry. Six, the six phase changes shaping access control. Uh, if you go to the access control book.com, that's, that's where you can get it. The access control book.com. Yeah. I think or access control book.com. I should yeah. probably know this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. If you go to access control book.com. Gotcha. That's where you can get the book. I'm actually, I, I shot uh, is it Anna on your team? Uh, it's pronounced Anna, but yes. Oh, Anna, which I, I appreciate her. Her. My daughter is Ava, not Ava. So I, oh, I, really? I, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm, I'm cognizant of that, but yeah, I just shot her a thing where we were going to do uh 50% off the book for your, for your group. Oh, uh, sweet. If you want to get it, it talks about the phase changes impacting. And frankly, to be honest with you, it, I, I, it's towards the access control industry, but it's stuff that impacts businesses. I think, uh, overall there's six of them that I think are happening right now. And, um, so wrote a little, a little ditty about them and, uh, that's, that's awesome. where it's at. Yeah. Cool. I'll be sure to put that in the notes and publish the podcast. I'm not sure when it's going to be out, but it'll be out soon. We got a few in the pipeline, but this will be good, man. Um, I appreciate you coming on, Lee, and it's good getting to yeah. know you. And I'm really, I'm really excited to meet you in person, get out of the house, <laughs> and uh, and start making some things happen. I'm with you. Me too. I look forward to that day that happens. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate you doing what you're doing and getting out there and, and, you know, taking the risk to put this together and, and yes. just keep it at it. That's the whole, the hardest part. Consistency. Consistency. It's hard. Yes, sir. It's, it's hard. hard. I told myself every day for a year, just do something, produce content, anything, pot, like everything just for a year uh, and see what happens. And here we are. And here you are. And it's yes, working. Sir. So, get up. Cool. Thanks, Lee. Talk to you soon, man. Thank you. You too. See you. See you.